It is a crisp Monday morning in March of 2021, and we're in the southern Arizona backcountry, not far from the town of Bisbee. As you know, Shannon and I travel together in two different vehicles. I'm in my Jeep Orangey, and she's in the Winnebago Revel. We share the Revel on the weekends, but during the week, she stays close to infrastructure where there's cell service, so she has connectivity for her work. Meanwhile, I take RNG far off grid to explore the backcountry. Well, Shannon has off work this week. She doesn't need to be connected, so we are going to travel side by side this week with both vehicles together. We're kicking off here at this great dispersed campsite on BLM land in the Arizona mountains. There's a phenomenal view of the valley to the west and to the south, and to the south, you can just about see Mexico. This spot is private, it's lovely, it's well sheltered by the vegetation, and it's accessible by both the Jeep and the Revel. Got some firewood to use. Bisbee is an artsy mining town way off the beaten path in the southeast corner of Arizona. It's my second time here and this town absolutely oozes character. If I were to ever put down roots and stop traveling, Bisbee might be at the top of my list. We have to drive? Oh yeah. Alright, I'll meet you there. We just stopped in downtown Bisbee, Arizona for coffee. There's a stone, just hit my brand new windshield. <laughs> we just stopped in Bisbee, Arizona for coffee and now we're making our way toward breakfast. 9.30 a.m., grab something nice to eat. I, I don't know why I didn't think to check before we left cell service. It's okay, we're not super far down the road, and if it goes up, uh, we'll get cell service again, too. I'm surprised they aren't in here somewhere. There's uh, plenty of opportunities, but at the same time, if they wanted for something deeper and a little bit more special, I'd dig that. Yeah, same here. We also established uh, in reach to in reach between you guys, so you can always message them that way. Oh, this looks really nice. Yeah, it's nice and grassy. It's Tuesday morning and we're in the southeastern corner of Arizona in yet another beautiful parcel of Coronado National Forest. Yesterday after spending time in Bisbee we made our way east and here we met up with the well-traveled Tim and Kelsey Huber. They travel and live full-time in their 80 series Land Cruiser and they run one of the YouTube channels that I draw a lot of inspiration from and that is Dirt Sunrise. Um, and please eat those berries, they've been taking up space and they need to be eaten. <laughs> <laughs> 
That's, Kelsey uh, is a berry eating machine. I love machine. berries. <laughs> Sometimes a machine and weird, but yeah. mostly good. So long as you've got good spice and yes. like salted your Totally, food. yeah. Dirt Sunrise. Where have you been and uh, what's your mission? Um, <laughs> to wander. <laughs> I guess, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think I think for us it was just to do something different. So we we started planning and we, you know, at Expo teaching people, we kept having people come back each year that are like, you know, I took what I learned and I went to here, I went to Iceland, I went to Africa. And I was like, wow. But there was a little part of you that was like, oh, when are we going to go? You know? Yeah. And then we just kept talking and I don't know, together we've always been able to do things that alone I probably would bliss out and say, well, I'll just keep saving. I can't afford to do that. And so she's like, well, I'm down to go. You are. And it was like, all right, one year from today. So we just made a date because we knew we needed a concrete date to shoot for. Otherwise, it's too easy to push it and yeah. push it and push yeah. it for valid reasons, yeah. but also invalid ones. <laughs> and then, um, we, yeah, we just started driving south and we didn't really have like the tip of South America as a plan yeah because I didn't want that weighing on us or people commenting when are you gonna get there why haven't you you know so we just kind of headed south and zigzagged you know no real yeah. route you know we just kind of went where we felt like going or we'd hear about a cool spot from somebody or we just see something on the maps and I'd be like let's see if we can get to the top of that volcano you know or whatever and um, over about two years yeah we, we made it all the way down to I think we did like tip of South 17 America. countries Something like that. Something like that, yeah. But it was amazing, and it was one of those things that, um, I don't know, as soon as we got a year in, we we're like, wow, we're only in Colombia. Like, yeah. we, we yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Because it was a one year, and then, of course, we we need to go back to work. We don't have the money to just yeah. go forever. But then when you, we came home and worked a bunch of different events, you know, teaching the off-road stuff that we do, um, we realized that we used so little money on the road that that was enough to almost go for another year. And we went, well, let's go back. Yeah, And then at the end of that year, you know, with COVID happening and everything, it was, I don't know what we're going to do, but let's do everything we can to keep this going. And so. Yeah, we took that initial leap, I think, of like doing something different, and then it starts to roll, and maybe not as fast as you hope it will roll, but it makes other things seem possible. Like, this can continue, yeah. we can keep going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know. That's, uh, that aligns with pretty much what happened with me. Um, I left and uh, went to one state. You know what's stopping me from going to the next state? Next thing you know, I'm in yeah. California. Yeah, yeah. And the next thing, next thing I knew, I was thinking like you guys thought, "Hey, I can do this full time." Yeah, yeah. But it's viable. Yeah, yeah. I think we have all such a almost a false sense of like security in life. You know, like driving to work seems like normal. And when you look yeah. at the statistics, you're like, "No, you're more likely to like yeah. die yeah. driving to work than doing something crazy like you know, living on the road or whatever." Yeah. And. I think everything just gives you this false sense of security, having a home, having, and you realize when you leave that it does somehow mentally give you that sense of security, but it's not necessarily real, I guess. I think once we left in like, like the first state and the first border and the first whatever, it keeps building your confidence. Yeah. I mean, sometimes it's rattled, you know, and you, you go, what am <laughs> I doing? You know, I'm not, I'm not this person. Yeah. Um, but I do think that, that just continuing like that, yeah, we started to realize that most of the things that we liked about our stationary life were just little cocoons of security that aren't yeah. real you know what i mean it's like no but when i had the job i was always guaranteed this well then again you know in the great recession i got laid off five times from different banks as they went out of business so i guess i didn't really have any security you know so you can almost always look back on all the things we thought of as security mm -hmm. and and comfort and go actually it wasn't really it was the idea of it or it was the belief i think I for had. me one of the things that i love like sharing or trying to share i don't know if it comes across but that like i'm not particularly brave and like i always would look at you know oh that indiana jones is like he doesn't worry about anything he just hops on it and you're like is anyone really like that i'm sure there are people like that but that's not me but i'm still able to like do it and enjoy it and i think i don't know when i would look at it before i'd wonder like i don't think i'm that person i'm not brave enough to just go but you for are. it and but i am and so i think everyone has that inside of them how long have you been living in goose two and a half three years. i think two and a half still yeah yeah um because we cut the top off them about i think it was january um <laughs> about was it january two years or three years ago now three years wow but yeah, so quite a while, you know, and for, I would say 90% we've been mm -hmm. in him, we've had like yeah. a month 
or two months where we came home to teach different events to make money to mm -hmm. continue the trip. We came back for a couple weeks for a smaller event. Yep. And then when we shipped them home, you know, we had to wait about a month for him to get back. So other than these little gaps here and there, um, we've just been in him the whole time. And, you know, he's a little different in the moment. We've changed a few things because there was a big countertop there that yeah. was sort of always feeling imposing and in yeah. our way. So we actually lost a little bit of storage room to gain a little more space in there. And, and the so, ability to sleep down below more comfortably, which yeah. in the cold is yeah. nice to have that option. Yeah. 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 yeah, down in Patagonia, we really only had the top bed. And, you know, these winds would come through that were gale force winds, you know, that could either rip the top off and we'd have these nightmares in the night of like, <laughs> what do you do if the top of your truck is ripped off? <laughs> just ratchet strap it down and keep going, I guess. So we wanted to have a downstairs bed just when it was really cold. We wanted to stealth camp sometimes yeah. where you're not maybe supposed to and just because you have to. Yeah. Or just sitting in the two front seats and mm -hmm. going, we're going to need a little bit of whiskey tonight to, to, to feel... <laughs> To not feel too much pain and just sit in your seat and wake up and Ooh. go, so what are we going to do today? Drive. So you go from sleeping to... <laughs> Adventure! <Yeah. laughs> I'm living the dream! Yeah. You know. So you guys have a YouTube channel. Yes. Yep. Dirt Sunrise. <laughs> yeah. Dirt Sunrise. Yep. And it chronicles your adventures to South America. Yep. Yeah, just taking people along for whatever we happen across and sharing thoughts and feelings and trying yeah. to convey what it is really like to, to travel like this, I guess. Yeah, I think for us, we try and just keep it, um, just whatever happens, you know, um, and keep it pretty relaxed, I think, and um, hopefully demystifying some of it, yeah. and mm -hmm. the fear part of it, and the, the, the super planning, like everything is a, a mission that needs to happen and stuff, and just kind of realizing that people are nice everywhere we went. Yeah, yeah. we're pretty um, normal. Normal every... people can do a trip like this. Yeah, <laughs> we're normal-ish, I guess. <laughs> a, little <laughs> a, little, a little weird. <laughs> but, you know, getting to a border and just going like, I'm just going to figure this out, it's mm -hmm. totally scary. And yeah. I think hopefully we don't hide any of that fear. We try not to. Uh, and just you do another one and another one, and, and it just works. And yeah. it's really amazing. And I think, um, yeah, I, we just didn't want it to come off as being really difficult and you need a, uh, an amazing skill set to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, we met people with zero mechanical skills mm -hmm. and then far better mechanical skills than me and we're somewhere kind of in the middle where we're like, we could fix a lot, but it doesn't matter. Everyone we met fix, figured things out, you know, mm -hmm. they, they found someone to help them. Were you challenged by language barriers at all? Or? It's hard to even say it was a barrier. There is a technical barrier of actual communication, yeah. but it really helped both of us being somewhat introverts who what we love about the U.S. exploring is getting away, yeah. aloneness, you know, being mm -hmm. being off on remote tracks where absolutely nobody is, maybe a couple close friends, or alone. And then the trip was really nothing like that. It was almost all the time interacting with people and just reminding you daily how nice people are mm -hmm. and how how willing to help everyone is. And then just trying to find a way to help them and being like, you know, that this, this, this old man that was heading up these switchbacks, uh, was it Peru? Mm -hmm. And he had his groceries in his little bags and it looked like he, you know, it looked like it hurt to walk. He was very old and, and I knew he had a long way to go. There's no houses in sight. Yeah. And so we're like, yeah, hop in, hop in. And you know, the truck was so tall. He's he had like, a hard time like getting in. Tall. He was a little guy, you know? <laughs> and uh, he was just wild. Like, who are these people that just picked me up? And we tried to ch chat a little bit. And when he got out, he insisted, insisted that we take some lettuce. I was like, you needed the lettuce so bad. Like you, you went down the mountain, down to keep the lettuce, you know? But he's just like, no, no. And like, I need to thank you. Yeah. And so we took some lettuce and we were like, that's we amazing. so bad that we took Well, we felt bad, room, but, but also, also so, amazing, yeah. so humbled and so yeah. honored that this guy was just like, thank you so much. I, that was really, that was really helpful. And you're like, I don't think we can decline the lettuce at this point. Yeah. I think we must take it, you know? And yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for yeah. inspiring yeah. me and um, Tim and Kelsey Huber, Dirt <laughs> Sunrise online. I'll put the link up somewhere. Please check them out.
Gila National Forest. I love this place. This is absolutely gorgeous up here. After taking on a mountain forest road in Orangey, Goose, and Rev, we parted with Tim and Kelsey this morning in Portal, Arizona. Then Shannon and I drove up to Silver City, New Mexico, where we resupplied, and from there we worked our way north, deep into Gila National Forest. On our way in here, at the higher elevations, around 7,200 feet to 7,400 feet, we encountered some snow. And it was absolutely beautiful, but fortunately the snow went away as soon as we descended into the basin. We ended up at this great national forest campground right on the Gila River, where we're going to settle into the revel tonight, enjoy some tea, and plan our next moves for tomorrow. I know on the camera outside I said we'd be hanging out in the revel and drinking tea, but not just tea. Shannon made popcorn. Wednesday morning in Gila National Forest in New Mexico and the temperature on the dashboard said that it was 19 degrees Fahrenheit out this morning. Looks like we've got clear skies, the wind is way down and I think it's going to warm up a good bit. Do you have enough leg room? Mm -hmm. This is the still the death wish bag that I was growing last week. Alright, it is Wednesday morning in Gila National Forest and we're off to Gila Cliff Dwellings. I was up here before a few years ago but did not go quite as far as the cliff dwellings. And it's something that I made a point to come back and revisit. It's beautiful. and the human figures in the distance really give you a sense of the size of the not just the cavity but the dwelling itself It's cool. I mean, temperature-wise, just natural cool. I drove past there uh, not long ago. It's really cool. It's 
like this, only bigger, I believe. What a great service. How many friends? Two. Hi. Hi. Your owners are having a good time right now. And they'll be right back. And they'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry. Gila Cliff Dwellings. The core hike is about a mile long and it's essentially a nature walk. It's kind of short, but the dwellings are very impressive. It's a well-maintained trail, very popular, and it didn't take us long at all. Now yesterday on our way in to Gila National Forest, we saw a lot of forest road tracks that we'd like to explore. So we're going to take RNG out and that's what we're going to do next. stream crossings which is indeed forest road as it's marked on the motor vehicle use map but I think it terminates at private property right here a ranch truck just passed us all right that is the end of the road We're on a beautiful track through Gila National Forest, just turning off and exploring random forest roads. But this is so why I love Gila. There are countless roads like this that wander in every direction. Orange is making a ruckus. It's a new rattle that I haven't heard before and I'm not sure what. It sounds like a loose exhaust, a loose shock. I don't think whatever is rattling is a severe problem, but I like to know what it is. Helipad. Nice and easy up onto that loose rock. There it was. <laughs> <laughs>
needless to say, it was an awesome day. I'm not quite ready to leave, but both of us need internet connectivity by Friday. And it's Wednesday night, and we are in the heart of Gila National Forest. There are no cell towers out here whatsoever, and we don't know quite where we're going to wrap up the week yet, but we'll probably talk about that tonight or figure it out tomorrow morning. Thursday morning in Silver City, New Mexico. If you've been following Venture Forward, you probably know by now that I love coffee and coffee shops. We just stopped at Tranquil Buzz Coffee Shop in town where we had internet access and we could plan our next moves for today. I was at that coffee shop before, back in 2017, and even then the atmosphere was great and I remember the coffee being very good. But now it's at a new location, one block away, and the atmosphere is amazing. It's got a lovely outdoor seating area. The coffee is fantastic and the pastries were very good too. Every now and then in my videos, I show the inside of a coffee shop or I show the beverage that I'm drinking, but it's very rare that I give a shout out. Well, I'm giving a shout out this time. Tranquil Buzz Coffee House in Silver City, New Mexico. Very, very nice. Gila National Forest consists of a very large parcel of national forest in southwestern New Mexico. These solid green areas north of Silver City, New Mexico are wilderness areas, which means they're protected and they're off limits to motorized vehicle travel. Although all of these gray and black dotted lines everywhere else are from the official Forest Service motor vehicle use map. So these are dirt roads and primitive tracks, and as you can see, there's a lot of them. The Gila Cliff Dwellings are a national monument located in the heart of Gila National Forest, and they are only accessible via a beautiful paved route that is a two-hour drive and roughly 40 miles north of Silver City, New Mexico. The Revel has been serving its purpose as an HQ, while RNG the Jeep serves as a scout, and that arrangement has been working very well. This wasn't a priority or even really on the radar when we first got the Revel, but the suspension is unpleasant for lack of a better word. It feels uninspired and it doesn't respond to varied terrain very well. It's bolstered a little bit, I believe, for the four-wheel drive chassis, but it still generally feels like a delivery truck. Also, I believe it's kind of squat in the back. So a new suspension is pretty much at the top of our wish list of forthcoming modifications. I don't want anything extreme. I don't want the tires to be majorly oversized. I just want something that offers a little more comfort and peace of mind off-road. It's Thursday afternoon in New Mexico, and I'm going to call that a wrap for the week. We're going to settle in here for the weekend, get this video out, and then, well keep on traveling. I hope you all enjoyed this week's adventure. Thank you, as always, for following along, and I will catch up with you again next week.